So there's apparently a new cartoon coming exclusively to Twitter. And this is three minutes and 42 seconds worth of peak conservative cringe with familiar voices that make it exponentially more cringeworthy. And you're going to know what I mean. I pre-watched this, by the way, just to make sure there's not anything too spicy in here. But it's not. It's very vanilla. And the worst part is that they put laugh tracks in here. So that way, you know when to laugh. But like this is just them over and over again belaboring the point about how woke bad. It is so bad. Like this is one of the worst conservative cartoons I've seen yet. I would say that this might actually be worse than the Mr. Bertram show on the Daily Wire. So it's pretty bad. But let me just uh, shut up and I'll, I'll play a little bit for uh, for you. What's that? Progress. It's the new norm. The new norm ain't the same as the old norm. I'm the old norm. I want normal beer. Warning. Warning. Parameter reached. <laughs> Ugh. It's your fault I got house arrest. You're the one who threatened the school board. I gently suggested. Yelled. They stop brainwashing my daughter that girls aren't girls and men aren't men. Sometimes they're neither, or both, or furry and dressed like dogs. Ow! I just gotta pause for a moment. So first of all, the gauges. I feel attacked personally as somebody with gauges, okay? I don't know if I'm that, uh, that caricature of a lefty, but I see you all. I see what you're doing. Uh, but, like, this is supposed to be the guy who we're all... Uh, it, it, from the position of a conservative, we're, you know, we're really sympathizing with this figure. But she just said, oh, you're wearing that ankle bracelet because you threatened the school board. So isn't that kind of a low-key diss to the conservatives you're trying to appeal to? That they're crazy enough to do things like this, threaten the school board over what he believes is LGBTQ plus indoctrination? I mean, if I were a conservative... I would take that as an insult. Odds are they're not bright enough to really make that connection. But another thing that stands out to me just off the bat is that this is like an, a, a super old person, right? But this is a show that's ex exclusively on Twitter. So the demographic you're trying to appeal to, like old people who long for the good old days, they're not going to see this shit. If you don't put this on Fox News, they're not seeing it. So you're going to get a bunch of middle-aged age Nazis probably finding this but is this really going to resonate with them sure the anti-woke messaging that's going to appeal to them uh but it seems like the target demographic here is is boomers like specifically republican boomers who are sick and tired of the youngs and their support for queer people so i just i don't i don't know it feels really off and again i just want to mention that the laugh tracks to me tells me that they're not confident in their own jokes and they've got to tell us when to laugh. Um, I know that was common in, in like the 90s and early 2000s, the sitcoms. But it's it's we're past the laugh tracks. Like, don't tell me when to laugh. But, you know, it's conservative. So maybe they do need to be told when to laugh. But let's watch a little bit more. Janice. What's that? Warning. Offensive. Whoa. OK, I got to pause it. Listen to this person's voice. Actually, that is one of my pronouns. Also, they, them, and me. You're non-binary? That's they, Ruben. My brain is still in recovery mode from taking in so many high-level important ideas. That's Dave fucking Rubin. And it's weird that he's like making his voice more Dave Rubin-y. Does that make sense? Like, there's the Dave Rubin voice, like, ideas. And it's like Dave Rubin doing an impression of Dave Rubin. I can't explain it. Like, he's he's... He's taking the Dave Rubinism and he's tuning it up to like a fucking 100 and he needs to dial it back a little bit. But Dave, <laughs> what's so funny is Dave Rubin is like the caricature of like the woke LGBTQ plus person. But dude, you're the person they're talking about. You're, you're a gay dude and you have children with your husband. That's like you're part of the problem. So, do you not feel personally insulted that you're the one playing this character? I love, mean, like, what? Yeah, Dave Squared, as, as Prong 999 says, it's just like two Dave Rubin-y. But, so this person, 
she finds out that uh, Dave Rubin's character is non-binary and is just like, you know, she's uh, she loves it because, yeah, this is this is the world that, you know, leftists want to live in. You know, when a queer person announces their arrival, you know, we, we open our arms and everybody just swarms and we're, we're you know, we're, we're greeted like celebrities. Mm, no, I think that they just want to be uh, treated equally. Right. A lot of queer people are introverted. And they don't want the spectacle to be made of them. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't expect a conservative to know that. But, like, they just want to be treated equally. It's not like they want you to have goo-goo eyes like this person when they when they enter the room. Non-binary people are just regular people. But, I mean, of course, the point is to hyperbolize and make it seem like, you know, the left is super cuckoo and crazy. But, I mean, they kind of already failed there because the craziest person is the main character who threatened the school board. Hence why he has to wear an, an ankle monitor, but we'll keep going. How do you know that word? I learned it in school. That's why I'm locked up. Norm, the judge agreed. How do you know that word? I mean, is this an elementary school kid? It seems like we're talking about like a high schooler. By then, they're, they probably know about non-binary people. They probably have non-binary friends. It's not like the teacher is going to tell them in sociology class, okay, now let's talk about uh, non-binary people. I mean, Jesus Christ, do you expect to just like shelter them away forever? This is a high schooler seemingly, so I, I, I don't know. I guess I don't get what the expectation is. To conditional parole. What condition? <laughs> Where is my room? That's You're staying, staying here? here? Chaz is part of a new government program. To re-educate homophobic... Ch okay, he is really doing the Dave Rubin voice. I just have to scroll up so you can see it. So he has, a, you know, the Black Lives Matter, the uh, the equality flag, just, just so you get the full picture here. Um, let me go back a little bit so you see um, their portrayal of indoctrination from the left. That's You're staying, staying here? here? Chaz is part of a new government program. To re-educate homophobic, transphobic, racist... Charlie, finally, someone normal. I... I don't understand. You're... black. Did that just black whisper? You're his friend? And boss. Speaking of, when you coming back to the trophy shop? As soon as I get rid of this. Which means I gotta take in that? Effective. Chaz is here to re-educate Norm. In non-bonary studies. Effective. I'm allergic to dogs. It's okay. Billy is an emotional support dog. And non-binary. Oh, okay then. Good dog. Okay. This is extremely stupid because... All dogs are basically non-binary. Because dogs don't have a gender. So thank you for demonstrating the point for us. I mean, look at Poopy. If I didn't tell you Poopy was a male dog, would you be able to tell that Poopy was a male dog? No, because dogs don't have genders. It's a social construct that human beings made up. Gender is expression. So they're kind of... They're making the point for us, and they don't even realize it. And again, I just have to point out, out of all these voice actors, you know, you have Larry Elder, you have, oh, I don't remember the name of the guy. He's the redheaded guy with long, curly hair. He's in this, too. I think he's playing the old man. There's uh, there's others. But Dave Rubin, by far and away, the worst voice actor out of all of them. Um, but there's more, because it, it kind of gets to the way that Dave Rubin's character is going to, uh, or or... More specifically, who he speak, who, who he's working for. I come here to get away from woke. Trouble at home? Ah, uh, my boy, or whatever it calls themselves now, is thinking about transitioning. Reggie? Reggie? Try Regina. Transitioning to what? Another fumble! Hopefully not a Jets fan. <laughs> hey, pronoun. This bud's for you. <laughs> I can't drink. I'm not 21. Y'all influenced my boy to cut off his junk, but draw the line at beer? Wait. I thought that he was uh, thinking of transitioning. That escalated quickly. But how is that related? Like, 
Oh, J.P. Sears? Yeah, I think so. That sounds familiar. Yeah, I think that's the person. I don't know. He he looks like a hippie, but he sounds like a fascist. I think that, yeah, I think it's J.P. Sears. I'm not 100% sure. But it's just constant bitching about woke. Um, we're two minutes and 40 seconds into this, and I feel like, you know, they're they're milking it as much as they can, but the well is already, it's dry. So how are you going to make a whole show about woke? It's like, yeah, we get it. Woke bad, woke bad. You know, queer people bad, non-binary people. Oh my God, that's crazy. But how do you how do you prolong this longer than like the three minutes and 42 seconds that we're seeing? It's it's astounding that they got that much content out of it. I mean, it's not quality content, to be clear. It's, it's dog shit. But how do you, like... How do you introduce other topics? And furthermore, do you really have to beat p- people over the head with it? I mean, if you want to drive home the point that woke bad, isn't there a way that you can do that more implicitly? Because this is pretty over the top. I mean, it's just not good propaganda because you're only speaking to people who already agree with you. But like if I'm crafting a propaganda piece that I know is propaganda, I'm not going to be as explicit, right? You prime people to come to certain conclusions. You don't just tell them, hey, this is the conclusion. Like, that's just bad propaganda. Tucker Carlson knows what good propaganda is. Uh, these people, they don't know how to make good propaganda. And, and watch like, watch this little phone call that Dave Rubin has. Can't do this. Yes, we can. Find a way to break him. Maybe we can fix the country. <laughs> so the core people in, in uh, Biden's administration they are giving uh, Dave Rubin orders on how to, I don't know, I guess brainwash the the old character. I genuinely don't know what, what the mission here is from LGBTQHQ uh, for Dave Rubin. But, uh, you know, he's he's on a mission. He's going he's gonna to turn uh, this old dude, I guess, into accepting. Maybe he's trying to trans him. I genuinely don't know what the point is. I just want normal beer okay just a second ago you threw the beer at dave rubin and said that one is for him but then you're like no actually i'm gonna drink the beer after it's all shaken up so you're triggered by the beer you shake it and then you drink it i mean you're communicating that the main character who we're supposed to sympathize with is a complete fucking dumbass why would you open the can after you shook it this is your main character this this is your conservative representation here. It's just it's 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 bad propaganda on so many levels. Uh, narratively speaking, it's a disaster, completely incoherent. It's just grievance politics, and the main character who's supposed to be telling us how bad woke is is a dumbass and a psychopath. Yeah, Brian, it's not consistent at all. You know there'll be jokes. The new norm ain't the same as the old norm. Everything's changing and I don't know when This woke nightmare will end Thank God for Elon Musk And his shitpost memes X is the home for free speech X is the home for free speech That just puts it over the top And they're Like it's It's giving South Park When they're making fun of conservatives But they're unironically being conservative here and they they're describing it as like the south park of x legalize hum- like what it's just all over the place and it's stupid but of course i want to see more specifically i would like a behind the scenes uh let me find the actual here we go let me find the actual post i would like a behind the scenes of dave rubin trying to record his lines, because I feel like the only thing that he changed was he made his voice more Dave Rubin-y. Like, there's no type of... He's not trying to make a character. He's just like, I'm just going to be Dave Rubin, but more Dave Rubin. You could mistake that for satire. That's how bad it is, but it's not. This is a conservative show. Did I miss this? The D's Nuts? Disney, D's Nuts. Man, the D's Nuts in 2024. Honestly, it's bold, if anything. I don't know what to say, you know, but um, if you're interested in that cartoon, it's exclusively available on X, where uh, the people who, in theory, should be watching it or would want to watch it, like the people 80 plus years old, 
they're not going to see it. And even if this was available on like Fox News' streaming platform or their television platform, do old people really like comedy in that way? Um, like boomers specifically, I think that if they're going to consume political content, it's going to be through some dipshit in a suit saying immigrants bad, not through a cartoon. I feel like that's kind of maybe it's more generational. I'm not entirely sure, but it just feels like this is this cartoon has an has an identity crisis and they don't really know who they want to appeal to. And it almost feels like it's satire um, and it's not, though. So that's what's crazy. But anyways, you know, uh, the new norm on X. Look out for it. I'll, I'm very excited about this and I'll be uh, I'll be watching every episode for sure. Woke ideology. 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 Wo